And then we're back. We're live. It's Energy 808, the cutting edge about energy here in Hawaii, more specifically in Molokai today. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about, uh, Molokai machinations. Uh, we're going to see what that means in the context of Molokai. And co-op. We got co-op already in Molokai. We'll talk about that, too. Uh, Ali Andrews and uh, Todd Yamashita, thank you for joining us today, you guys. Oh, yeah. Our pleasure. My pleasure. So, Ali, could you introduce Todd? And then, Todd, could you introduce Ali? See what we get out of that. Ooh, absolutely. I'll go first. Um, uh, Todd Yamashita is the president of Ho'ahu Energy Cooperative, Molokai, uh, which is a grassroots effort. Uh, started about a year and a half ago, formally, but uh, many years in the making, I would say, in terms of energy advocacy on the island. Um, and uh, uh, the co-op is spearheading the first community-owned, community-based renewable energy project uh, this year. Okay, fair enough. That is, how much of that would you agree with, Todd? Oh, it so, sounds pretty accurate. All right, now it's your turn. So can you introduce Ali Andrews? Sure. So Ali's a good friend of mine. She's from Shake Energy Collaborative, which is a uh, women owned. Um, it's a, uh, uh, they're an energy, co uh, Ali might do a better job of uh, <laughs> telling us. <laughs> so uh, uh, she can agree or disagree, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, she, they're, they're a women owned, uh, you know, a benefit corporation. Uh, and they've actually really been instrumental in helping Molokai kind of um, find our way in energy and, and defining Molokai's energy future. And, and I, I'm just really grateful to Ali for, you know, spending literally years uh, meeting with our community and helping us forward. Okay. Uh, Ali, you want to take a rebuttal on that? Absolutely not. No, I feel like that intro was over flattering so okay. all um, right so uh ali let's go to you first you know why molokai why molokai i mean there's lots of other islands uh is molokai special in some way Ooh, molokai is special in many ways absolutely um i would say why molokai from my company's perspective is that we are trying to enable community designed and community owned energy and uh, the group that we have been working with on Molokai is sort of primed and ready to design and own their own energy. They've been working on uh, energy literacy as a group. Uh, there's the nonprofit Sustainable Molokai has been working for many years to sort of increase awareness about different energy options and what the community likes and doesn't like. So they're really ready to engage in this conversation of what do we want our energy future to look like? How do we own it? Let's get down to the details of literally what solar panels and what battery technology do we want to propose? Um, I think they're in a very exciting place from that perspective. You know, one, one point of distinction that I, that I carry, and I could be wrong, is that Molokai has a what do you want to call it, a constituency that really wants to be involved. Um, they don't want somebody coming in and telling them what to do in energy. They want to be involved in developing energy, in shaping, managing energy. Am I right? Perhaps more than other islands. And that's probably because Molokai is different um, and it's small. Am I right about all of that? You know, definitely. Uh, Molokai is really, really different. I, I think it's old school in a lot of ways. Um, we're Hawaiian. Uh, really, to, you know, to, to our heart. And, and, and with that, I mean, we're, we're always, uh, we have a, a attention on our resources. You know, all our resources are very limited. The island is small. Um, and even though with, we have about 7,000 people here, it's still really critical, um, you know, that we, we kind of keep track of things. And energy happens to be um, kind of at the forefront of things right now. It, it's, it, you know, it's always been about water, I would say, on Molokai. Um, and now that this uh, new energy space is opening up, we're, we're seeing like an opportunity, you know, to get some community benefit, hopefully, in, in this area. Mm. So um, what's the difference between a collaborative, you're going to love this question, what's the difference between a collaborative and a co-op? And um, can, can a collaborative, can the farmers and ranchers be friends? 
can a collaborative, can a collaborative and a co-op live together on Molokai? I would say so. Yeah, what do you think? So far, so good. Um, you know, I, I, you know, you, you know. Let's take take a look at this from a big big picture. Um, I think energy traditionally um, has has been somewhat, you know, it's, it's been somewhat extractive, um, and so we're trying to look at um, how to do energy and energy projects in in a, in a kind of a different sort of way. Um, you know, how can we uh, form something that works well for the community? And so we've had a really in depth conversation and. What we found was that for us, it looks like the cooperative model is going to work really well. And what do you think, Ali? Can it work with a, col a, a collaborative model? I mean, what what's the difference? A cooperative sounds to me, I'm not really familiar with what's happening in Molokai, but um, sounds to me like uh, it's a it's a legal structure, sort of like the Hawaii Island uh, Energy Co-op or, or KIUC. Um, so can you have a co-op just for Molokai? And um, how, how much, um, you know, of the geography does that, does that deal with everything, some things? And, uh, and if there is a relationship between the collaborative and the co-op, what, what is that? You guys say you're friends, but um, are you also competitors? Um, maybe I'll answer the collaborative versus cooperative, uh, and then Todd, I'm going to punt it to you in terms of what the co-op um, uh, means. Uh, so my company uh, is called Shake Energy Collaborative because we want to take a collaborative approach to developing projects, designing with, not for, communities. Um, and I would say overall that um, uh, idea of how we are working together has been working really well that we are we are partners in um, the cooperative they are the decision makers they are the ultimate owners and tenants and stewards of the project and our company along with our partner development company mana pacific we bring the options we bring um, uh, some of the format of like how we make decisions uh, we help host community workshops um, but ultimately, I think the, the symbiosis of how do we do it, they make the decisions and, and we help implement um, has been working very well. I'll so is your expertise in uh, engineering? Is it in, um, you know, grid development? Uh, is it in uh, renewables? Uh, what, what, are you, what are you offering? What, Ali, is your special sauce? Ooh, special sauce, I would say overall, is um, the community design element of an energy project. I think that's how we differentiate ourselves from other energy developers is that we put a special emphasis on making sure that the project designed is designed by the community and not for the community or in a vacuum, not in I, including the community at all. Um, uh, yes, that's our secret sauce. Okay. And uh, are you working or do you contemplate working on specific projects on Molokai and what are they? Oh, yes. Uh, we, the, the co-op is focusing on uh, a community-based renewable energy project, also known as CBRE or shared solar across the state, which is a, a 2.75 megawatt total across two sites, solar plus battery storage project. Um, and yeah. I, you know, I remember uh, visiting uh, the Molokai, uh, you know, I guess it's the Maui, um, the Maui, the Molokai branch of the Maui Electric Company. <laughs> and, and there's a couple of things there. One is, is a substantial diesel facility and the other is, is a, a kind of short term battery. This was as a, about a year or two ago. And um, I'm wondering, um, is that the same site that you're talking about, Ali, or is it a different site? Uh, Todd, you want to answer that one? Sure. Yeah. So, so right now, um, the CBRE that we're looking at is proposed to be at Paul Al, which is where the um, where the power station is. Um, but in a nutshell, it's just to kind of give you a more um, a, a bigger idea of, of what it is. Um, like Ali said, two point seven five megawatts. So this accounts for about twenty percent of Molokai's uh, energy needs. And for us, the community-based renewable energy aspect allows us to do virtual solar for people who can't like uh, people who rent their homes and whatnot they can't put solar on the roofs so for us 
we'll go out, we'll put your solar panels in our field and we'll give you um, the benefit and the, the cost benefit uh, that will reflect on your utility bill. Um, for us, it's a little different uh, between KIUC, uh, uh, Kauai, and our planned um, co-op here on Molokai and how, how we intend to operate. For us, this is just a foot in the door. We're not taking over the grid. Um, we want uh, a chance to take on this 20% of Molokai's renewable energy, do a really great job with it, make sure that um, the people who don't have access to energy or have little access to energy, make sure these guys are benefited first. And after that, um, you know, we do have a lot more planned, but we are all in on the CBRE because we have to be successful. Yeah, let's talk about it, uh, CBRE. Um, that's a relatively new model. Um, and I guess to have a CBRE, you have to get permission. Um, so tell us the, you know, the status of your efforts. Uh, where are you on the continuum that takes you to completion and integration and so forth? Uh, Todd, you you talk. Sure. So um, the CBRE, uh, you know, the the draft CBRE uh, RFP was was released, and so that's a request for proposal. Uh, our community, that's one of the things that really galvanized our community. It said, you know, we we came together. We were already talking about energy. We came together and we said, look at this project. This is a great reason to create a co-op and 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 to bring uh, value back to our people using our own resources like the sun and whatnot. Um, we got deeper into it and saw that the RFP had a lot of problems. So we went to the PUC and, um, you know, we realized that the PUC uh, it really is uh, an advocate, uh, that there is a lot of advocacy there for us. And um, basically, in a nutshell, what's happened is it's created a broader discussion, right? Um, how can the PUC help the community uh, to be further forward in the process, to be upfront in the process, so that when a lot of these large, um, you know, grid scale projects roll out um, that they're not at odds. They're not creating friction. Um, you know, we have community consent. You have the community involved up front. And so where we're at with the process right now is the PUC is uh, we recently had a, uh, uh, a status conference and it, it, it allows us um, a seat uh, at the front of, of, of the of the class and at the table and it, it looks like it's going to allow us to work directly hopefully with the utility with the puc and craft a better project um i keep reminding myself that this project you know it, we can get all into the details and whatnot but what it's really about is the people on molokai we have the well, high that, electricity prices that, that takes my uh, yes of course so uh, it takes my attention to Ali, you're, you're the people person primarily, aren't you? You're out there designing relations with the community. And I, I wanted to ask you about the status of your work with the community. What kind of feedback have you gotten? What kind of commitment have you gotten? Um, and I guess there's two levels of that because my, my recollection is a co-op involves members. You have to get members from the community. And, and two is like in any place in the islands, you you want to get community buy-in to the projects uh, individually um, so that um, people are on the same page. And if they're not on the same page, that has created you know, significant problems in energy development in the past and in some places right now. So mm, tell us about the status of your efforts in reaching out and um, the, the status of the, what do you want to call it, public acceptance, public support of the co-op uh, and um, any projects that are, you know, happening within the co-op? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think uh, Todd will be a great reference to, to see if my uh, temperature check is correct. But I think uh, that so far we, we have a lot of buy-in from a small group of uh, very dedicated community members on the order of two to three dozen who show up pretty regularly to our weekly and bi-weekly community workshops. Um, and then we've been slowly growing outwards from there. So I think, Todd, I think we have 180 or so community members on our email list that we invite to our Saturday workshops. And we don't get 180. We usually get two dozen, maybe three dozen on a particularly spicy topic. 
um, that piques people's interest to want to show up over Zoom. Um, the wild thing is that a lot of this has happened over Zoom and, and ha we haven't been able to host any in-person community workshops, mm, um, cool. yeah. uh, which has been a challenge, but that, that's an ongoing uh, effort, I would say, shared by my company and the co-op. Um, they recognize that in order for us to be successful, uh, we need to have broader, even more broad community support than what we have right now. If we build the CBRE project, we could have upwards of a thousand homes sign up for um, uh, the project, which is, there are, what is it, I think a little over 3,000 uh, residential customers on the island. So we need to convince a third of the island that they want to sign up for a project. I don't think it's going to be a hard sell so far. Everybody really is behind the values of the co-op and the mission of the co-op and the fact that it's locally owned and um, the profits stay on the island is super important to a lot of people. But that's not to say that there aren't issues where, where we have strong uh, um, words strong like I think we should do this no I'm really concerned about that and I think the fact that we're able to have those conversations over zoom is amazing and and we'll continue those Todd, well you know the last time I assessment? looked at Molokai there were people on Molokai who were uh, kind of in the community organization department there um, there were people in Molokai who wanted a piece of the action you know you alluded to that a moment ago you said the profits should stay on Molokai and all that um, so uh, do people have, people on Molokai have an expectation that they will own the project or maybe this goes to the, um, you know, co-op aspect of things, uh, but what are their expectations when you do meet with them, talk with them, get feedback from them, what do they expect that you and Todd will be doing for them and what they will be getting out of it? Um, oh yeah, go for it, Todd, go. That's a really good question, and, and I, I think the number one thing is transparency. Um, they want to know that we're everything that we're learning uh, is going to be shared, uh, that they have a seat at the table, that our community meetings are accessible. Um, you know, they're, they're, they want to know everything from, hey, where is the battery coming from? Uh, is it, how is it manufactured? Is it kind to the earth? Uh, how, how is the labor practices with the manufacturing? All of those tiny little details we're drilling down on, uh, on, on a regular basis. Those things matter to us. Um, things affect our small community and we wanna make sure that the projects that we're doing are, you know, is, is not gonna ne negatively impact another small community somewhat. Yeah, okay, um, gee, so if the answer to the question about whether the battery um, is, is environmentally kind um, aren't satisfactory, what happens then? You, you know, I, I, again, at, at some point you have to compromise. You know, you have to, this is our foot in our door and, and I'm not saying that we are gonna make compromises. I am saying that we're gonna go out and we're gonna, with our community, uh, with our energy experts informing us, we are gonna take as much information as we can and, and make the best possible decision we can given mainstream technology given what uh given the parameters of the project the parameters uh the project has specific parameters such as solar plus storage um and you know we have to be able to deliver on, on that oh solar plus storage we had a show on that a few days ago and that sounds pretty attractive because you get some money uh, for the plus part of solar plus um and w will these projects uh, benefit by solar plus storage I mean that pro that that particular um, program. Um, I can I'll I'll start with this one and Todd, you add anything after. Um, so yes, absolutely. Um, uh, the project, I believe, the reason that the utility requested that all projects, all CBRE projects on Molokai have solar plus storage is that they already have a good amount of solar on folks' rooftops on the island and, and they've sort of reached a capacity that they can deal with um, without batteries. And so uh, we are asked, we are required by the utility to put uh, batteries on there and that will definitely benefit the full grid as a whole because they can charge and discharge on a daily basis and sort of even out what they need to uh, call on their 
diesel power plant to produce, and that will lower the cost of operating that diesel plant if they're allowed to operate it at a little more of an even um, aspect. And so therefore, we can, when we bid in, when we charge a price to the utility uh, for our project, we that value will be reflected in our bid price. So absolutely, well, we're taking advantage of good, solar good, good. storage. The other thing is, um, you know, you guys are, uh, is it, is it fair to say that you're both kind of like startups? Oh yeah, absolutely. We are um, we are startups. We're scrappy. We are uh, figuring it out. Um, uh, but I would good. say, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Todd, would you? Do you think we're scrappy? Yeah, we're still defining who we are. We're you know who are we? We're not a developer. Uh, I I I don't work for any money. I'm completely volunteer. Everybody I work with is volunteer. Uh, we're working tons of hours on this, you know, and, and so and, and we're trying to involve as many people as we can so that we can truly say we're community owned or community run. And um, yeah, what that what that's going to look like um, legally or structurally, we're, we're still defining that. OK, so um, uh, why? Why Todd, are you doing this? Uh, is it is it for the big bucks? Uh, is it are you on the way to becoming a, another uh, Jeff Bezos or what? Uh, no, definitely not. Um, you know, my my grandfather was the president of Molokai Electric, and that was when it was still privately owned. And I remember those days. And my father followed in his footsteps. And you know, back then the utility was an integral part of our community. There was no separating Molokai Electric and Molokai. It was just, you know, we, everyone knew that everyone here was employed by the company. Uh, a lot of the give back went directly to the community. And, you know, it, it's, it's just, it just makes sense. It makes sense that in this day and age, if we can farm the sun and turn that into energy and that sun is shining on everyone, we should be able to technically do this. You know, you used the term a few minutes ago, uh, referring to, um, uh, the environmental, uh, the environmental um, motivations on a project like this, uh, and I, I forget the exact term, but it was something about um, you, you. Uh, what we do these days is we extract. I think that's the term you use. We extract, and we do not, um, you know, give back to the environment. We don't. We don't do things that make the environment sustainable. Uh, and I said to myself, huh, well, it's an environmentalist. Only an environmentalist would put it that way. <laughs> am I right? I, you know, I, I am in conservation. I'm a Hokulea worldwide voyager. Uh, you know, I have two, two boys, eight and 10 years old. And, you know, they're gonna be inheriting uh, the mess that we leave behind. And, and so, yes, it, I, I'm a little bit of an environmentalist, absolutely. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm in this because the bigger picture is kindness. We need to be kind towards each other. And if there is haves and have nots in our communities, we need to look out for each other. We need to look out for the planet. We have to be kind to the planet. We all know where this is headed. So there's no excuses. Like, let's, let's, get, let's get working on stuff like this. You know, let's make these things work and happen. Um, you're going to make any money, really? Uh, and you're going to have any money left over to 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 provide to your membership in the co-op. I mean, they're going to get a check. Uh, what is it? How does it pencil out for you? Uh, you, you know, we're 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 right now. That is one of the reasons why we're we're working so hard at crafting this RFP. We want it to benefit the community. Uh, are we going to make money? I, if you mean the community, yes, I hope so. I hope we save on our electricity bills. We we use the least amount of electricity. We have the highest, uh, you know, rates, and and it just doesn't make sense to us. It's not fair for us. So, and Ali, I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you answer as well. Oh, good. You can tell us what you tell the people. <laughs> <laughs> um. Absolutely. Um. I I would say. I mean, the the model of the cooperative is not. It itself, its entity to profit, it's to save money for its members. And uh, ultimately, I, uh, Todd can speak to this, but the members are broadly represented in the community. So uh, we want this project to pencil and we will only do this project if it saves people money. We will not pursue the project if it doesn't save anybody money because uh, that's not what it's meant for. Um, mm -hmm. And I 
Yeah, I would say uh, we're still working on that. There are a lot of uncertainties in terms of what is the interconnection cost going to be? How much is it going to cost to ship, you know, 7,000 solar panels to Molokai in two years? Um, uh, we're, but we're doing our due diligence. We're, we're getting as many estimates as we can for all of those various factors um, and building that into our model. And the, the cooperative is, is very closely involved in those understandings and, and our research and will be very involved in our ultimate proposal. So uh, can you give me a, a sort of a differential between the way things are on Molokai energy-wise right now and the way things will be when you achieve this and uh, other projects? Uh, how, how will things change for the people of Molokai with your you know, projects and input and what have you? And by the way, I do remember that there have been various projects planned for Molokai that never actually happened. So you guys are following in the footsteps of um, entrepreneurs. I, maybe that's not the right word for a co-op. Uh, you're following in the footsteps of entrepreneurs that were unable to finish their plans. Um, Ali, why don't you answer it first and then Todd can chime in. Yeah, yeah, I think this is probably a, a better a Todd question than for me, but I, I hope that through our work together, we will create a capacity for this project, say this project is successful, it's online, it's producing the electricity we want it to, it's producing the, the grid services, the, the battery storage capabilities that we want it to, it's saving uh, co-op members and the, the subscribers money. And also it has built the capacity for the co-op to pursue its next two dozen projects. This is not its last project on its on its list, and, and I think definitely not the last project that Molokai needs, and I think it makes all the sense in the world for the co-op to be spearheading uh, all of the future various very creative um, energy projects. Uh, so that's what I hope, is that we've built the capacity for the co-op um, to pursue what it wants in the future. Todd, what do you think? Uh, Todd, you know, what is the status of energy now? Um, you know, I, I know that at least some of it is diesel, although maybe rooftop solar, hither and yon. Um, and, and what do you hope to achieve in terms of the net effect, the net result uh, with the co-op and uh, some of these uh, community-based projects? Great, great questions. Um, so the current status is that we have zero uh, grid scale renewable energy projects. We are years and years and years behind. The pressure is on uh, all parties uh, to stop burning diesel to stabilize prices for our Molokai people uh, and, and to hopefully, you know, have a, a, a meaningful reduction on their bill going forward. Yes, absolutely. We want this to be our foot in the door. We want this to lead to bigger and better things. Right now, there are a number of people that live uh, out, off of the grid completely. Projects like this uh, won't, you know, even really help these people. So uh, we want this project to empower us. We want to uh, go forward in this and shine. We want to attract attention and partners through this so that we can continue to reach out uh, and, and, and to bring energy uh, access to, to everyone on Molokai. And, and not just in terms of you know, what you plug your refrigerator into. Uh, we want to look at transportation. We want to look at cars. We want to look at you know, how can we bring our carbon footprint down across the board and do it in a way which is equitable um, and that has energy justice at, at its core. Wow. Wow. No wonder the PUC likes you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let me let me ask you this. I mean, it's, you know, it's one of the points in the title of our show, which is uh, Molokai Mac Machinations, a co-op in the cards. So we have two co-ops uh, that are, you know, that are established. So one of the big island uh, is still coming about under Marco Mangelsdorf and so. Um, but um, what are your thoughts about taking this, this whole um, system, this, this um, thing you're designing uh, to other islands? Uh, is this, is what you are looking at now, what you're trying to figure out now, something that could be useful on other islands, or if not islands, then maybe neighborhoods? Um, you know, parts of islands uh, in the future. Um, is this is or is or is this or are you, are you limited to 
um, right now to Molokai. Um, and if, if you're looking at other areas, uh, how, how would you do that? How would you take it to other places? And how would you, mm, you know, do the transition, so to speak? Thank you for that question, really. Um, so, so as far as our footprint here on Molokai, this, this is our kuleana here on our island, and, and we're going to take care of ourselves as best we can. That being said, we have a homegrown energy justice group that um, includes people uh, from Waianae, from Kahuku, and, and from throughout Hawaii that has been uh, inspired by some of the work that we've been doing in the past year. And so in terms of uh, taking this statewide, um, yeah, we, we have every intention to influence um, and impact and hopefully change some of the way that the rules around renewable energy, the inclusiveness of the community, um, community consent, getting the community up front in the process. Those are the ways that we want to further develop renewable energy um, throughout Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, what about you, Ali? Do you see an expansion of... Uh... What is it, the shape mm -hmm. um, be, beyond Molokai? Um, uh, do, you, do you see it, uh, you know, doing the same sort of community outreach, um, you know, activities on the Big Island or Kauai or even Oahu or Maui? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I definitely think so. And I think that the, the message um, and the story uh, that Ho'ahu shares um, has really inspired folks, like like Todd was mentioning. Um, uh, we've been starting to talk to folks on Oahu that have been, I think, in in similar situations of of systematic oppression, of of seeing projects that come to their space that they do not appreciate and do not value, and have felt powerless over the implementation of. I think those communities uh, are just now thinking about. You know, what does it look like for us to build from the ground up? And I think that looks, I'm learning that that looks very different um, uh, depending on what community you're going into. Uh, so I'm learning a lot about, you know, what was I doing a year and a half ago with the Molokai community uh, to start the conversation? And uh, what, how can I modify that to fit uh, this new group that I'm talking to? Um, I think it's, to be determined, but definitely yes, very very shareable, but in in new ways in each place. Hmm. Yeah, you know one one of the problems in Oahu is that there's not all that much land. Mm -hmm. We talk about that all the time, mm -hmm. and um, and you have neighborhoods that they may have bought into say wind turbines, not too far from their towns and homes and so on and so forth, but then they have they have other thoughts about it as the wind turbines get built. And before you know it, you have a, a NIMBY effect um, where they uh, they have agreed or, or it appeared they have agreed um, to a given project and then they like unagree. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it just turns out to be NIMBY. We don't want to close to us. And we really don't, you know, we, we don't care about what other sites you might be able to find, but you can't do it here. Um, and, and the problem with that is in Oahu, there's not that much land that's available for these things. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I wonder how, how you deal with that, because if you say, tell us if you want this or you don't want this, um, you know, a lot of constituent homeowners and all that will, they'll say, no, we don't want it. Put it in somebody else's backyard. How do you deal with that? Because you could easily be you know, just sort of opposing anything that a NIMBY person would oppose. I, mm -hmm. I know it's a hard question. No, this is this is great. I, this is what we came here to talk about. Let's talk about this. Um, you know, as you know, the the, uh, the the whole landscape is changing really quickly. Um, we're, we're starting to talk about, um, you, you know, instead of grid following uh, technologies, grid building technologies. You know, we're, we're, if you're talking about space and looking at all these different spaces, you have all these homes that have all these solar and, and now you're having solar plus storage on all these homes. If you start working with grid building technologies, now you're talking about virtual utility. Now you're not having to bulldoze, you know, 100 acres uh, of ag land 
you've already got the infrastructure. You've already got the development inf infrastructure right at home. You know, the question is now at this point, say you get that far, right? How do you create equity between the haves and the have nots? How sure, you, big, big question, you huge, big question. How do yeah, you do that? Yeah. Um, how do you, I, how do, you I, do that, Ali? Yeah. Because some people will never <laughs> be able to afford solar on their rooftop, period. No matter what kind of financing arrangement you give them, they will not be able to afford it. So what do you do for them? Yeah, I, th I think that uh, that may be true. Um, although I think uh, every problem is potentially solvable by grants or subsidies or, or you know, the government creating a loan program that does not, um, that is not contingent upon your credit score, but is a contingent upon your ability to repay your utility bills, et cetera. Like there are different metrics that definitely other states and this state is also exploring um, through the GEMS Fund, which I think is very awesome. Um, I also wanted to touch back on the idea of NIMBYism and the idea of creating equity through community consent. Uh, I think that the, the paradox of uh, it's either a yes or a no, you like renewable energy or you don't in your neighborhood, I think, I think that is maybe the way that development has been considered in the past and is probably why we run into these issues is like, this is my project, say yes or say no to it, but please say yes. Um, I think what we are doing on Molokai, which I think I feel really inspired by is the like, what should we do? We all are on the same page that we, we want renewable energy and we wanna know what it looks like. Okay, is it wind, is it solar? What immediately we shifted to solar because wind has a, a historic, um, opposition we thought it would be easier to go solar but i think we also heard from the community that maybe wind could be a yes in certain circumstances um, if it weren't forced upon us in the one way that the developer said it was going to look like so i think on oahu when you're talking to community members who have opposed renewable energy in a certain format in a certain place it's not that they do not support renewable energy and i don't mean to speak for them they also have shared their own opinions about it but i think uh, creating a blank slate and saying, what do you want in your in your backyard? What what does renewable energy look like? I think a lot of it does look like using developed space, using parking lots, using rooftops where we can, and then getting creative about dual land uses in other areas where agriculture and solar are viable, and maybe in some areas that's not viable, and people are willing to make that assessment of land use. So I, I think it's a co-creation conversation, not a, do you want it or do you not want it, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I totally agree. I, I, I think that's really important. Creativity can solve so many problems, even problems that seem to be insoluble. But let me ask you one last question. This is, we got to close pretty soon. So let me ask you one last question. You know, there, there, are, uh, there are people in communities in Hawaii that see each island as a separate community. I think that's so on Molokai. And it may be so on other islands too. It's a separate community where, you know, it's, it's, it's miles away and a plane ride. Uh, I wish it was a ferry ride too, but a plane ride to uh, other islands. And, and they see themselves as separate communities and separate personalities, separate personas. Um, and so when you get, for, for a variety of reasons, when the issue of an undersea cable was raised a few years ago, a big pushback. Nobody wanted that. A lot of people didn't want that. Um, but in the future, it seems to me that the technology would allow for that and that you could take um, a place, for example, like the Big Island, which has you know, a huge amount of space, which could generate an extraordinary amounts of energy far beyond its uh, island needs uh, they could share that. Same thing in um, in uh, Maui, I think. Um, but, you know, there's still a kind of, it's radioactive. The issue is radioactive. But I wanted to know what you guys think about the possibility of islands sharing energy, however it's generated, with other islands. Or is that foreclosed by our history, our culture, our radioactive recollections of what happened uh, with the undersea cable issue 10 years ago? Uh, yeah, thanks. I, I, uh, I, I, I think it again, um, it comes down to, um, you know, literally how much do you need? 
right? Um, I, if I put solar on my house, on my rooftop, I need about a third of my rooftop for solar. So how big do you need to go? You know, how, how, how big do you need, right? And, and so if, if the footprint is, is really only that big, then we don't need to go to every other island, um, you know, to borrow or trade or whatever. Um, you know, let's, let's solve what we got in our own backyard and, 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 and go from there. Ali? Um, I think that's totally right. And one thing that I would add is that I, I think creative solutions like that uh, could be really amazing um, as long as we're not recreating the harms of our past where we use, you know, putting generation over here because no one's going to bother us to uh, support load over here because, you know, the hotels or uh, the fancy neighborhood needs it. I think there's a long history of uh, systematic racism in putting our energy generation in locations where people of color, where low-income communities uh, feel like they have less voice to push that out. And there's sort of the dumping grounds for uh, fossil fuel generation in the past and even renewable energy generation currently. Um, I think that's that's still happening today, and we need to work hard to make sure that we don't continue to perpetuate that. And as long as you know, uh, island to island generation uh, doesn't perpetuate that, I think that would be a cool thing to explore. Wow, you guys are so thoughtful. You know, <clears throat> you are um, the voice of the future, and I, I predict that you will be successful. Uh, I wish you would be successful, uh, and I wish you would uh, teach us all some lessons about how to do this statewide. Adia Mashida, uh, Ali Andrews, thank you so much for joining us on this discussion. Thank Mahalo, you. Jay. All right. Aloha. <laughs>